Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bit Heroes Radio. I'm Bit for Sandy, and I'm thrilled to be hosting. Oh Sorry. wait. Sorry, bro. No, oh, yeah. Hold on. You just got me off. Let's let's redo that intro. Um. <clears throat> hey guys, and welcome to Bit Heroes Radio. I'm Bit for Sandy, and I'm thrilled to be hosting this episode with World Leader. Why don't you say hi, World? What's up, Andy? Hey guys, glad to be here. All right. Uh, just jumping straight into the agenda. Um. So today we're going to be talking over the most recent the most recent patch notes, all about the Easter events, the event shop. <laughs> dude, world, bro, that is so annoying. You've cut me off again, dude. You literally don't respect what I'm saying. This happens like I swear every week we record. You're either always late or you have the most annoying recording habits. Always cutting me off. Okay. Anything else, or can we continue? Just unbelievable, dude. I'm honestly done with this podcast. Like, goodbye. Hello, and welcome to Bit Heroes Radio. I'm World Eater, and I'm thrilled to be hosting this podcast with my new, much better co host, Antimans. Well, thank you, World. I am glad to be here. Sad to see Andy quitting Bit Heroes Radio. Uh, but, you know, things happened, and uh, it, it is what it is at the end of the day. Unfortunately, um, Andy was a Glar supporter, and I just I just wasn't about that. So we had to get rid of him on the show to get someone here that actually knows what they're talking about. But let's go ahead and see what we're going to do. You want to carry on with the agenda, Anto? Yeah, so I'll begin the agenda. So the agenda we have today, we're going to be looking at the patch notes. Then we're looking at the Easter event. We'll talk about the event shop. Then we'll talk about the regular shop sales. And obviously, everyone's favorite, we're going to be talking fashion heroes, as well as viewer questions. And not to forget, comment of the week to wrap things off uh, at the very end. So uh, to begin, uh, do you want me to read patch notes, World? Is that all right? Sounds yeah. good to me. All right. So patch notes, March 28th, after server reset, it says, the egg hunt event has begun. What's first, the bunny or the egg? You have until April 12th to bring Holy Cups, which is the event materials, to Sodden X and get cool rewards in exchange. Uh, and over here, there's a little subtext, which we'll get into afterwards. But whenever you fight a boss or complete the run of Gauntlet, Trials, Invasion, and Expedition, you have a chance of earning Holy Cups. And as it's an Easter event, uh, all the daily bonuses are doubled until April 11th. So that's two weeks of double daily bonuses. Now is a great time to grind. Uh, then we have new PvP, fishing, and gauntlet events that have also began. And GVG will be here until April 4th. And after GVG ends, we are going to jump straight into Rumble Invasion for the second week of the event until April 11th. And after the gauntlet event ends, shockingly, uh, we're going to get a Trials event. I'm sure nobody expected that. And uh, another change log that they added was the improved online detection, which I'm not sure exactly what they did. But that's the only thing that says, but that is a great, great improvement, especially for World Boss. Most definitely. I do know um, that there's a lot of times where I'm trying to message someone on my friends list, but it'll show that they've been offline for like a few minutes, a few seconds, or a few hours, but they're there just pushing really hard. Sometimes they're even connecting to different lobbies and it still shows them offline. So hopefully that fixed that issue because that's honestly a really, really annoying problem uh, when it does come to playing world boss with others or just even messaging or even inviting people to guilds and adding people and so forth. But um, everything else that they spoke about here, double daily bonuses, fantastic. Remember to farm on X experience day, please guys. Experience day yeah. is key. So anytime you see an experience boost, Especially if it's doubled, go for it. Push as hard as you can because, trust me, it's just so much more worth. But these patch notes do have something here that you guys really just want to pay attention to. Um, it does state, whenever you fight a boss or complete a run of Gauntlet, Trials, Invasion, and Expedition, you will have a chance of earning Holy Cups. That's a big change to keep in mind. And again, we'll talk about it in a second. But let's just talk in general, I think, about the East event. Um and how it functions if it's your first time doing it. So basically, you'll be collecting rabbits in town, just clicking on them, and they'll be giving you some freebies. You can talk to Sardonex uh, every day to collect more freebies. If you miss a day, it's completely fine. You can collect it the day after. 
uh, or you can just come in on the last day and speak to Sardonex and uh, claim every single of the daily rewards. Uh, so speaking of the East event, World, where would you say is the best place to farm the event currency? So for this event, we do have Holy Cups as the event currency. Um, originally, I would always recommend PvP or GVG if it was an option for the week. But as you saw in the patch notes, you cannot get any event currency, which is the Holy Cups, from those two game modes. Um, those were my favorite because you're able to do those runs really quickly. And you're able to just pretty much get a nice start getting all those resources um, from one of the boxes. You Sometimes you're just able to get the big gore right away, depending on how hard you push. But it's unfortunate. But those were my two original recommendations. As of right now, I like to push World Boss for my event currency. Yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, so World Boss is by far the fastest way to get the event currency, um, followed by what I would say is the most efficient for least amount of resources per maximum of the event material gain would be Dungeon 4s, as there are three bosses, so you have even more chance to drop uh, the event materials, which are the Holy Cups. And that's pretty much it. So what, anything else you want to add to that world, or should we move on to the Sardonex shop? Uh, yeah, just one quick tip real quick before we get off from the event part itself. I really want to make sure you guys know that the rabbits also do spawn on Fishing Island. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Some people actually think they're only in town, but you can actually find some rabbits on Fishing Island. I'm going to go ahead and show you here real quick. Going to town or going to the Fishing Island. As you see here, right next to the boat on the left, there is a rabbit here to claim right away. So make sure you're checking all the locations possible. But yes, let's go ahead and go into the event shop. There's multiple ways to open the shop. You can either click on Sardinex himself here in town, like so, or you can click the Egg Hunt logo on the bottom right to access it as well. Starting yep. off with the first box, we are going to have the energy box. Um, it's pretty nice. Uh, we used to get the uh, legendary, uh, legendary resource packs for free before which was really awesome it's unfortunate that it's here as a chest but at least it's pretty cheap i always recommend going for this first if possible seeing as it will help you far more and get more of this currency in the long run yeah i pretty much agree and uh, as you said it was nice to get these for free but at the end of the day you end up getting a couple more resources from this box uh which are the jelly cups and the average thing average uh materials average resources sorry um that are just extra bonuses but again it would be nice in my opinion to not have to buy this out and rather it just gets given to us and we get reduced event materials because what ends up happening is everyone usually gets this first anyway for the most part and um, you end up getting the materials just by collecting them speaking to the rabbits or clicking on sudden x so if they would reduce that and we just get this it would save a step in the process for players but that is just a minor thing um what about the next box world? What are you thinking for the so, cosmetics? The cosmetics are pretty clean. I do think that they're getting better and better every year. Um, just by looking at them, they seem to have more detail. Sometimes they release some with animations. I do know that this one right here, the Begzerker staff, has an animation on it, which looks really clean. Not too sure on the other ones yet because I haven't obtained them myself. But I can tell you one thing, the offhand and main hand are like are really, really cool because I love any kind of main hand that changes the appearance from a traditional look, like just holding a sword or a staff. So it's really cool to see this different stance looking weapon as a cosmetic. So I really do hope they bring more of this in. Yeah, I agree. Much like Law and Order, it's like a combo cosmetic that you usually use together. And it would be awesome to see more of these. Again, cosmetics are super, super nice, the uh, new ones. And the old ones as well, if you didn't get them last year, you can get them this year. Um, one thing to note is that if you've already gotten some of these, it won't be grayed out for you. So you might be double buying them if you already got everything, for example. So just keep that in mind when going for these uh, old cosmetic chests. Yeah, you definitely want to double check to see if you might already have them. Because um, I do know sometimes since I have multiple characters, I'll have all of them on one character and maybe a majority of them on another. So it's really important to double check before you purchase from the old box. 
just to make sure on that. Um, but let's go ahead and go on to the material box, which is a lot of people's favorite boxing as you do get some mythic materials like pinions, mud, collars, etc. This is one of the go-to boxes for free-to-plays especially. Um, this is probably the most valuable box um, right next to the boost box. I really do like this box. I'm glad they haven't changed it. I'm glad all they did was add to it. If anything, this is the one box that I'll always be happy with. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, this box gives a little bit of everything, and some of these things you can't you can't necessarily farm for them in the game. The materials you can, but TS is harder to get. Uh, the mount guards, rune fragments, usually have to wait until the end of the uh, weekly events. But this makes it nice, so you can pick some up by grinding for them, which I really, really like this box. Uh, and if we go to the next box, uh, the consumables box, which is my personal favorite as the consumables collector, um, you got your everything that is usually in there. I think there's one less mythic uh, compared to the last event. Not sure if it's a less one less Oda Gore, one less Spite Gore. Um, but again, this box is very, very nice. I really love the experience tomes, the gold, and that's pretty much it. I think a lot of the things are obviously not going to be so great, like the movement speed and item find I am not a fan of, but that comes to personal preference at the end of the day. And usability, I think experience is just always the best. Yeah, I completely agree. If there's any recommendation I would make to this, I would say instead of making it five of each, like five chances for item find, five chances for experience, etc., cetera, um, I would probably lower them all to four. And for the last row, give at least maybe one more mythic, even if it is just a bite gore, and maybe something like a super scroll and, I mean, an experience tomb or capture tomb would be nice. Just something other than boots, you know, and an and, and, and uh, item find scroll. I just feel like we should be getting just a little bit more, you know, just a little bit more. But um, I do understand why they don't. I just um, I just really think we should have at least one more good boost, even if it is just a super scroll. But um, getting away from this box, it does need work. But going right on to the next item, we're going to see the Big Gore here. Now, the Big Gore used to be in that box, which is where it originally came from. I just really wish it was still there. But... Um, it's not. It seems like they really want it to be its own individual purchase, and that's fine with me. However, I really do think it should come down in cost to 500 and not be so expensive. Um, either way, everyone is going to get this item. I just think if you want to tweak it just a little bit, just to make it easier for the free to players and I guess the more average player to just, you know, get this consumable and get to take advantage of the new cosmetics chest a little more from the energy box of course and the materials box that would be a really nice welcome change that really won't change too much yeah i pretty much agree with that uh yeah as you said bitgo is one of the best if not the best boost in the game and uh it would be nice to have it back into this box, but if it's going to be separate, it would be nice, as you said, to have a 500 to match the 500%, I guess, would make it very nice uh, visually and a nice little change for the players. And now we're going to move on and talk about the new familiar of the event, Choco Myth. Um, so first of all, looking at how he's made, he's made with two Remitees and 10,000 gold. Um, so Remitees nice, you can get him very early on. So you, this familiar you can get very, very early into the game. Uh, looking at his stat spread, it's pretty good. He's not the fastest, um, but he does have a 32% damage bonus, which is very, very nice. It means you're going to be, he's always going to be applying this no matter what uh, to every single attack. And Will, do you want to give us a rundown on his skills? Yeah, honestly, his skills aren't the greatest, but they're not bad. Uh, I'm going to go in order here. He does have a 0 SP, the only 0 SP he has, unfortunately, which is going to be a damage closest enemy. Um, pretty average 0 SP ability, nothing crazy. But once you get into their 1 SP, which is their second ability, it deals damage to the closest three enemies. Now, what does that mean? That means that he'll work really good with Dual Strike to help proc those when you hit brains. So if you want to be more offensive or just have more heals with a defensive brain, that is a really fantastic move to take advantage of that. Um, you also have a 2 SP, which is really nice because it's something that's not really seen 
that early in game, and by what I mean by that early is once you're able to make Remy, this ability here gives a shield team and fury to your team. Fury usually isn't seen until around tier 12, so you can get fury pretty early, and this could really help out your team. Um, it's not really normal to see a support that's this okay or this decent this early in the game, so it's a really nice addition to see this in their moveset. Um, they also have a spread heal and gain 1 SP. Now, the reason that's good is because it essentially turns that into a 1 SP spread heal. It's just the initial cost that costs a little much. But I'm not too sure if it means that the person or the familiar, which is Chuckle Mint, however you say their name, um, gets 1 SP or if the whole team gets the SP since it is a spread. But um, even if it is just the 1 SP gain for the familiar itself, it's still fantastic. And their last ability, which is a 3 SP, Give Fury and Cleanse to target. Um, that's a really good ability, but you're only going to be using that, honestly, late game, because you're not going to need Cleanse until elements come out. So that move is pretty obsolete until you hit the mid game. Yeah, I pretty much agree. Again, as you said, I think uh, his best skill would be his 1 SP to damage closest 3. Uh, that's what you're going to be spamming most of the time, as well as the shield team, a bit of a blinker type of familiar. Um, so that is very, very nice. And you can build them with Empower and uh, go for that big, big shields, or you can go dual strike and still get the shields and get lots of rain procs. So he does have a few ways that you can build him, which is quite nice. He's not very one-dimensional. And uh, as you said, he's a bit of a late-game familiar that you can get very early into the game, and he will last you all the way until tier 21. One thing to note about this familiar is that 32% damage bonus also does affect the fury that it gives to the team, so just keep that in mind. But we're going to be going on to the regular shop now. We go over here to the normal shop, and we're just going to go over the stuff that comes around during events. We're going to start off with the Easter pack itself. It is currently $29.99 USD. And honestly, the only thing I like about this is, one, it does come with cosmetics. I love cosmetics. And two, it comes with a 250% for 168 hours. So that's pretty much seven days right there, right? And the one thing I like about it is it actually gives you everything. They have a bunch of boosts like this that only give capture aid and item find and stuff like that. But the ones that give you a little bit of everything is nice because at the end of the day, Having that much bonus XP is just super, super nice. The problem I see here is I just feel like the amount of resources given is too low. I would like to see like four of each, you know, five of each. That would be a really nice, compelling purchase that I would definitely snag in a heartbeat. Um, but it also does come with 100 Holy Cups, but um, I still would rather have more resources. Yeah, and I think it's completely fair to give it a few more resources, especially because this is a special limited time uh, bundle that they're selling for the Easter event. So it would be nice to see these be slightly stronger than the regular um, shop sales that they usually offer. Um, but as you said, yeah, that 250% for a week, uh, looking at that for experience, even if you just pop that on regen for the second week or for the first week of like the next event, it's going to net you a lot of free honor essentially so this is a pretty nice boost and uh, i recommend picking it up if that's what you really really want let's go ahead and go on to the next sale um i really do want to talk about this mythic matte energy pack since it is fairly new and it has only been around during the event um it's currently going for eighteen thousand gems and if you do the math technically it's supposed to be a good deal but um it's just too highly priced for a majority of the community in my opinion I really do think it has to be a lot lower than that. I don't know many players that even have over 5,000 gems. Um, I think if they really want to take advantage of players getting these sales, they should take a look at how much gems the average player has and try to pretty much revolve their sales around that. Because um, unfortunately, 18K is just a lot. Myself personally, I like to stack gems and I currently have just three or 400 shy of 10k so i myself can't even take advantage of this deal unfortunately but um to me it just seems okay i think uh around 14k would be a nicer price point still a little high but um just seeing what's in here that to me is uh more of a deal for an event than uh than just a sale 
Yeah, uh, I agree. I would even argue that this is slightly better than the Easter Egg when you're talking about resources only. Obviously, it doesn't come with a boost. The Mythic materials are the main attraction. And it does come out to being 500 gems per resource in this. So you get 36 legendary resources. But of course, it's a lot nicer when you get to choose exactly what you want because not everyone wants uh, badges and stuff. So I do like that they sell all the resources, but it would be nice to get targeted ones specifically. So a couple more raids in this one or a couple. They could split this box up because essentially when I see a gem sale, I think that's free to play friendly and free to play players can achieve this if they save up for this. Completely agree. Um, if I can make one more note about this box, like you said right now, they can split it. They can easily make a bunch of small versions of this box. Like they can put 10 shards uh, with one curio for 5,000 gems. And that's still a deal. You know, that is still a deal. Um, to me, that's a little better. It's targeted. Um, maybe 12 packs for, t for 5K just to make sure it's definitely a deal. But what I'm trying to say is you want to try to have it to where... The player can pick what they want because me when i look at this i'm looking at it and i'm saying i don't want energy packs i don't want tickets i got plenty of shards i hate zeal packs i mainly only ever want badges and tokens for myself personally um and of course shards but i do have quite a bit but um that's what i personally go for and that's what's making me not want this another thing that's making me not want this i have way too much uh of the tg mythic material I have too many pinions, and um, I have way too much mud. So just looking at those alone, you can already see that there's a lot of things that a player would not want from this bundle. So I think breaking it down a little more, that way the players can get exactly what they need uh, for a similar price point, to me is a lot better because players want to play more than they do want to just get their resources right away. Because I think if you're giving the players something like a curio right away, it's kind of just taking the fun away. So I personally think more resources, more than materials in their sales should definitely be a thing. I 100% agree. Because at the end of the day, uh, 18,000 gems follow this. You could split it up very nicely because each one of these mythic materials drops for the specific mode. So you could make it so that it's 3,000 gems for six raids, for example, and one curio, or 3,000 gems for six zeals and obviously the corresponding mat and so on and so forth, if that makes sense. When I look at this, getting the choice is very nice. And obviously for 18,000 gems, if you buy the resources when they are 440 gems, you're essentially getting 40 of whatever resource you want, which is more than the 36 that come in here. So again, this is very nice. It is a step in the right direction to try out these different sales, but it can be further improved. For sure. I would definitely start off with the price point and seeing the average player's gem count. Even if you have to ask the players, I just really think this is what um what definitely has to be changed here. But this is a really nice sale. Again, this is a step in the right direction. Um, I really did want to talk about this sale in particular because it is different. Um, but I just hope they tweak it a bit to to where a majority of players could take advantage of this. But moving on to the last thing, it's not really um per se an event. Um it's not really just exclusive to the event. It does come around quite often, but there usually is a better version of this box, and that's going to be the Large Lucky Boost Box. Um, for me personally, um, a lot of people may disagree with me. Um, I hate this box, and I'll tell you why. Twelve fifty to me is too high of a price point to possibly get a ticket roll. Um, if there is no chance of getting a boost better than what I get monthly per um per hero i don't want to roll this box um i think if you're gonna make this box this box even if you don't want to put an ultra gore in every single one there should at least be the 750 percent experience gore the 750 percent item fine and the 750 percent capture rate and even then um, I still think this this box is just it's just lacking a bit for me. There's too much epic stuff in here. When I roll a gotcha, I want to at least know, okay, like it's close to worth. Not oh, I just spent more than double on a ticket roll. You know, it, it feels really bad to roll this box. And just seeing the best option as something you get for free every month just really makes it worse. Yep, I 100% agree. Me as a 
pay to play player myself nft enthusiast when i see this usually i'm only getting it if i can buy the whole thing and only if when there's an ultra goal because the ultra goal does make it worth it but again the most valuable thing as you can see is a bit goal and 1250 gems is just too much to gamble especially when you look at the other things that you could be spending your gems on for the previous sale for example 18,000 gems is much better than spending 18,000 gems in this current uh large lucky box but that's pretty much all i have to say about it yeah for sure i mean with 1250 gems i'm pretty close to almost getting three packs of shards on the 440 resources day um three packs is around 1300 i think 1320 so i'd rather just save my gems and get three stacks of shards than possibly get um epic speed kicks so yeah, um definitely I, uh needs to be reworked but uh yeah that's gonna be it for the regular shop everything else is just discounted but it's the same old same old i don't really think we have to go over it but if you guys have any questions on what you should either go for in the shop um what our recommendations are please leave um, your feedback in the comments below and we'll definitely respond um, but we're going to be moving on to our next segment which is going to be fashion heroes do you want to kick that off antimans yeah, so let's begin with the winner from last week. And drum roll, please. The winner from last week is Athena. Congratulations. Your cosmetic looks very, very awesome. I do love the blue tones. One of my favorite colors. Look a lot like a laser samurai. That's how I see it with the little blue aura. Again, very clean cosmetic. Really, really appreciate it. Very well deserved win. What do you think, World, of this cosmetic? completely agree um i really do love the synergy in this again huge congratulations and welcome to the hall of fame and now we're going to go on to the new contestants for this week it's gonna be a little different this week um we do have antimans versus myself we're going to start off with antimans here antimans to me looks fantastic he is rocking that super awesome savage it's going to be really hard to go against that awesome 1k cosmetic um followed with that awesome savage pet and he does have that melvin drip with that awesome mythic rod um looking super clean i can already see i'm gonna have trouble here but uh i don't know i think i look pretty I, fresh i wouldn't put it too far because looking at your cosmetic that dragon could put up a small little fight i suppose against my big savage his muscles are great but is the dragon greater I'll leave that for chat to decide, so make sure to vote for me. I mean, vote who you think, obviously, should win uh, in the comments below. Yes, yeah, so please, 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 if you guys want to be in the next Fashion Heroes, please leave your hero tag in the comments. Uh, and don't forget to vote for me, just so we know exactly who won yeah, this yeah, week's yeah, Fashion agree. Heroes. Yeah, yeah, vote for me, as Walt said, guys. You already know it. So, moving on, should we talk about some viewer questions, Walt? Of course, of course. Kick off the first one. So, first question comes from Delaire. Um, number one, of course. Can't forget the number one. But um, his question was, and a genuine question, does revitalize cleanse? So he asked some people. Some say it don't. Some says it do. Um, there'll be a video, by the way. So looking at this, it's a bit hard for me to decipher exactly what the question is. But from what I've understood from this is, does when you revitalize... Does it cleanse? So for those of you that don't know, you can check out all the mechanics in the Bit Heroes wiki. But Revitalize essentially spreads heal for X percent of your power whenever you hit an enemy. And cleanse removes all stacks from the target. Uh, friend, so it's a friendly ability, like you cast it on a friendly non-enemy unit. Um, and it removes all the negative effects, any elemental debuffs and things like that that you might have on yourself. Uh, the new familiar that we spoke about has a cleanse skill so usually when you revitalize it does not proc cleanse unless there's a specific skill that says that it revitalizes and cleanses at the same time uh what do you think about this world yeah i completely agree i do know that there is some confusion in the community and it's just because when a lot of familiars or when the familiars that do have revitalize um, use their skills they tend to have a cleanse skill in their kit because it just synergizes so well i do believe the devs just tend to pair those two a lot but antimant is correct on this a revitalize does not give a cleanse automatically um, that's unfortunate but the good thing is you do typically see them together so it shouldn't be too big of an issue 
We're going to be going on to the next question here, though, which is going to be from Ian Bob 2 Does healing bonus affect drain? Now, from my personal experience, I don't think that it does affect drain. If anything, I'm pretty positive that it doesn't. Um, I know that damage buff does, or damage bonus, sorry, does affect it, and possibly empower. I haven't tested it yet. What about you, Antimans? So... Going back from memory, obviously I would have to test this to be 100% certain, but I believe in power does affect the damage portion of the skill, but the actual drain itself should be fixed, I believe. Do not quote me on this, you'd have to test it yourself, but it's 45% of your power, I believe. When you do have a drain ability or a skill like that, it's 45% of your power and does that amount of damage and you drain the same amount. So usually it is a 45% fix ratio unless it changes depending on whatever set or weapon the drain effect is happening yeah it's but, a little confusing yeah. but um i would just definitely confirm that <clears throat> yeah it does sound a little confusing but definitely to confirm the question healing bonus does not affect drain yes and now we're going to be oh. going on to the comments of the week coming from jason baker 541 that intro i laughed so hard i farted what a banger Congrats, Pocket Apple. Now, just a little bit of insight. He was talking about the intro to our last episode of BHR, so if you've missed it, check it out. But what do you think about that comment, Anto? That comment, honestly, it, it pretty much speaks to me uh, when seeing your intros. I mean, that's how I feel every single time because they're always so good and so funny. Um, and honestly, this deserves comment of the week. I think it was very well deserved by Jason Baker, 541. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Sounds good. This is going to be the end of Bit Heroes Radio, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We do hope you enjoyed listening to our discussion today about all things Bit Heroes. We also are sad about Andy's departure from this podcast. Psych! But as always, we want to give a big shout out to our community of fans who make this podcast possible. Yeah, so that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Check out World Eater's channel at World Eater on YouTube. And don't forget to hit that bell so you can keep up with all the notifications. Don't forget to check out my channel as well. I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Antomans. And I'm also on YouTube under the same name, Antomans. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Have a great one, guys. Peace.